Ever wondered how to pick the best database for your project? In this video, we're going to outline the core characteristics of both SQL and NoSQL databases and understand exactly the use cases each database performs best in. So let's jump in. SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it's the standard language for relational database management systems. SQL is designed to handle structured data, meaning data that fits nicely into tailums with rows and columns. The key properties include it's a structured schema, so these predefined schemas that strictly enforce data organization. It also has a relational model, so data is stored in tables and relationships are defined by FR and keys. And there's also asset compliance, so it ensures atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability for reliable transactions. The advantages include it's a powerful query language, so SQL allows for complex queries, joins, and aggregations, as well as data integrity. So there's strong consistency and well-defined relationships. And finally, industry standardization. It's widely used with a vast ecosystem and community support. The disadvantages include reduced flexibility. So the strict schema can make it harder to evolve the database structure as requirements change. And then there's also scaling challenges. So typically they, they scale vertically, which means adding more hardware resources like CPU to a single server rather than horizontally, which means adding more servers. Examples of SQL include MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle Database, and Microsoft SQL Server. And it's typically used in financial applications, e-commerce transactions, and CRM systems, and any scenario where data consistency and complex queries are paramount. So now let's look at NoSQL. So NoSQL stands for not only SQL, and it's a category of database systems that deviate from the traditional relational model. NoSQL databases handle unstructured or semi-structured data and are designed for flexible schemas, high performance, and scalability. The key characteristics include flexible schemas, so it allows data structures to evolve over time without expensive migrations. There's also horizontal scalability, so it's easy to distribute data across multiple servers. High performance, so it's optimized for large-scale rapid reads and writes. And there's also eventual consistency. So there's often a trade-off made between immediate consistency for better performance and availability. So there are four main types of NoSQL databases, and the first is a document store. So document stores are store data as documents, often JSON, each with its own structure. The advantages include it has a flexible schema and it's easy to modify and update documents. The disadvantages include this complex queries can oftentimes be more challenging to implement than in SQL. Examples of document stores include MongoDB and CouchDB, and their ideal use cases include content management systems, blogging platforms, and rapidly evolving data models. Next, we have key value stores, and so here data is stored as simple key value pairs. And so the advantages of this is that it's extremely fast for reads and writes and other simple operations. However, the disadvantages include that there's limiting querying capabilities, and you generally need to know the key to access the value. Examples include Redis and RIAC, and it's perfect for things like caching, session management, and real-time analytics. Next, we have column family stores. And so this stores data in tables, but each row can have a variable number of columns. And the advantages of this includes high scalability and optimized for large data sets and analytical queries. And the disadvantages include less complex querying capabilities compared to relational databases, and it can require careful schema design. Examples include Apache Cassandra and HBase, and it's commonly used in big data analytics, large scale logging, and time series data. And finally, the last major group of NoSQL databases are graph databases. And so these represent data as nodes and edges, making relationships first-class citizens. So the advantages of this include it's efficient for traversing complex relationships, and so it's great for recommendation engines or social networks. The disadvantages include that it may not be as fast for simple read-write operations on large data sets. Examples include Neo4j, Amazon Neptune, and it's ideal for both social graphs, fraud detection, and network analysis. So to summary, we've got SQL. So this is designed to handle structured data, meaning data that fits nicely into tables with rows and columns. And we've got MySQL, Postgres, Oracle Database, MySQL Server as some of the most popular databases. And then for NoSQL, these are handled unstructured or semi-structured data and are designed for flexible schemas, high performance, and scalability. The four main categories include document store, so store data as documents, often JSON, each with its own structure, so MongoDB, CouchDB. Then we have key value stores, so data is stored as key value pairs. Again, think Redis, RIAC. And then there's column family stores. So this stores data in tables, but each row can have a variable number of columns. So think Apache, Cassandra, HBase. And then finally, graph database. So this represents data as nodes and edges, making relationships first class citizens. So think Neo4j, Amazon Neptune. So I hope that was a clear explanation of the differences between SQL and NoSQL. So if you could like and subscribe and maybe share it with a friend, it helps the channel out a lot. And also don't forget to check out techprep.app for the most up-to-date technical interview questions and solutions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.